So how do we actually uh, look at the uh, equations of motion, or how do we use the equations of motion with this idea of what we call free fall? Okay, so free fall, uh, I guess maybe before I start drawing diagrams, we ought to define free fall. All right, so free fall is the state of uh, motion where the only force acting on the object or the only thing that's influencing the object would be gravity. Okay, so uh, things that can be in free fall would be something like a, uh, a bullet or a uh, baseball, or a basketball, or a tennis ball. Now, not all of the time are these objects going to be in free fall, okay? So, for instance, if I hit a golf ball really hard, and I'm Tiger Woods, and I can put all sorts of spin on it and different things, first of all, a golf ball is designed with the little uh, uh, divots in the ball itself. Those are there to help provide lift. Uh, so there's there's not only gravity working on that, there's some other aerodynamic things going on, but even like a soccer ball or a golf ball or a tennis ball, when you put spin on it and it does funky things in the air, um, it, the, the spin is putting some aerodynamic forces on the ball. But if I were to just drop, uh, say, any of these objects out of a window, okay? So let's say I'm on uh, 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 some, I don't care how high we are, let's see. So that's the second story, this will be the third story. Let's say we're in the, the, the top of a fifth story of, uh, apartment, right? Uh, so if I have a balcony out here and I just drop a baseball, right, and let it drop down, then as long as the only influence on the object, in this case my baseball, is gravity, then we're in what we call free fall. Okay, so uh, even if you toss something up in the air, right, as long as you don't toss it too high or too fast, uh, or it has any other uh, uh, aerodynamic forces acting on it, uh, so if you just toss a tennis ball up into the air, um, you know, when you're just playing catch with yourself or something like that, then even on the way up, okay, the object is still technically in free fall. Okay, I want to make that point very clear. The, the object doesn't have to be getting closer to the ground to be in free fall. Uh, um, but uh, the only influence on the ball while it's in the air is going to be gravity. All right. Um, so that is what we call free fall. Now, let's look at this case <clears throat> all right, where we have the ball and we're on the fifth story and if we're on the fifth story then we can approximately say right if there's about five uh, let's say this is a generous uh, uh, apartment complex and it has uh, fairly high uh, ceilings uh, or the distances between floors so let's say the distances between floors are five meters each and uh, we're five stories up so five meters per story times five stories and that gives us we're 25 meters above the ground okay so this distance here for this example is going to be 25 meters above the ground right um, now what I want to do is kind of follow the example that they give in the book in figure 3.7 and talk about what is happening to the ball at successive increments of time. Okay, At successive increments of time. And we, what, what, what we want to do, I'm getting tongue tied a little bit there, what we want to do is look at how fast the ball is moving at that point, what its acceleration is, and what the distance that it's covered. Okay, so uh, we'll choose uh, half a second. All right, we'll choose half a second, and we'll look at the uh, times 
uh, every half second we'll look at, we'll calculate its velocities, acceleration, and distance it's falling. Okay, so let's look at whoops, let's look at the first half second here. <clears throat> Let me just kind of redraw this just a little bit and clear some things out. So if I have a ball and it's falling this way and at our initial time or t initial, sometimes the book uses t0 or a su zero subscript for um, initial values, and I guess we ought to be consistent with the book, right? So at T0, then that is the point at which you drop it, okay? So at T0, our velocity is 0, and it hasn't fallen any distance yet because we have just, I mean, just let it go. So when we're talking about these initial quantities, we're talking right at the very instant you let it go. All right, so it hasn't had any time to fall, so it didn't get any distance, and it hasn't gotten any velocity yet, right? But what about, uh, and, and we'll say again that our change in time is going to be uh, at every half second, okay? So uh, if T0 is where our stopwatch starts, at our first time interval, which equals... 0 0.5 seconds okay again we want to calculate what the velocity is we want the distance and we want whoops and we want the acceleration okay here's a hint okay here's a hint if you go back to the previous lesson what did we say the acceleration was okay if you recall the acceleration was 10 meters per second squared right and technically it's approximately that okay so in all of these examples that we're about to do a does not change okay the acceleration due to gravity, uh, specifically Earth's gravity, since that's where we are, is specifically dependent on the, the characteristics of the Earth, namely its uh, mass and its radius. Okay? But, <clears throat> because the Earth is so much more massive than an individual human being, as long as we're very close to the surface, and by very close I mean you have to get above... Um, you know, uh, uh, jetliner uh, altitudes before there's a significant change in this number, okay? So you can even be on the top of a mountain and drop a ball from a meter high and time it with a stopwatch and do that several times and you still will get a value very close to this 10 meters per second square, okay? So as long as we're near sea level, which 25 meters above the ground is is very close. And even if you're up here in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, where we're about 400 feet above sea level, uh, and then you're 25 meters above that, you're still not going to be anywhere uh, near uh, a region where this value will change. Okay, so A does not change. So that already get, tells us something about the motion of this object. Okay. Every second that this baseball falls, it will be 10 meters per second faster. So even though we're going to do our calculations every half second, uh, what this acceleration means is that after one second of um, uh, falling, it will be going at 10 meters per second, and then after two seconds of falling, it will be going 20 meters per second, and so on and so forth. Okay? <clears throat> so... Once again, the acceleration during free fall does not change for our purposes here. Okay, so you have to kind of get into like rocketry and things like that for it to change. But for our purposes, A will always be a constant 9.8 or if you want to round it up to 10 to make calculations easier, that's exactly what we'll do. So we already know that this is going to equal 10 meters Per second squared. Okay. Now, if we know that, 
we can get the velocity. How can we get the velocity? Well, remember that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Right? Well, we already know what the initial velocity was. It was zero. Right? So if you drop something from rest, that goes away, and VF simply becomes a T. So after one half second, right, our acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second squared, and our time at 0.5 seconds, well, 10 times 0.5 is just 5, and our seconds here will cancel out with one of the seconds there, and we're just left with meters per second, 5, and technically I guess I should write uh, 5.0 meters per second. So after half a second the object is going to be going at five meters per second. Okay, that's its velocity. What about the distance it's fallen? Okay, so how far will it have fallen? Right, how far will it have fallen a distance d1 in that half second? So to calculate d1, remember that distance is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared but again since the initial velocity is zero all we need to do is worry about this one half a t squared business okay so after a half second we're gonna get one half times ten meters per second squared and after one half second make sure that that gets squared okay so here's our equation and now we need to do is plug this into our calculator well this is going to be 0 0.25 square seconds make that decimal a little bit better All right square seconds and 0 0.25 times 10 well 0 0.25 is the same thing as a quarter or one fourth and one fourth of ten is going to be what? Two point five. Okay, so we're going to get one half times two point five, and our second squared here cancel out with our second squared there, and we're going to get two point five meters. One one half times two point five meters, which is going to be one point two five meters. So in a half of a second, the object has fallen 1.25 meters. Okay. Now let's look at the next time interval. All right. So uh, this distance right here is the distance we just calculated. What about the next half second? What about uh, at, at time equals one second? Well, we know that because the distance goes as the square of the time. We expect the distance after one second to be uh, more than one half of the, uh, or more than double, I should say, the distance that it fell uh, in the first half second. So in, in one second, it might fall maybe down to here. All right, so it only falls this far in the half second, and then over the course of the entire second, it falls a little bit longer, uh, or a little bit larger distance. All right. So let's look at the case where t equals 1.0 seconds, and let's calculate the velocity and the distance. And so the velocity, and we can in fact cut this in half, and we'll do the velocity over here, and then we'll do the distance over here. So the velocity, again, the initial velocity goes to zero, so this is going to be a t, which is going to be equal to 10 meters per second squared times 1 second which is 10 meters per second. And again, right, this is basically what we said about the definition of acceleration. If the object is accelerating at 10 meters per second squared, after one second, it will be going 10 meters per second. So that's no surprise. Well, how far has it fallen now? All right, so what we need to do is plug into our equation, d equals 1 half a t squared. This is going to be 1 half a, or 10 meters per second squared, 
times 1 second quantity squared. And now look what happens, okay? Uh, 1 second squared is just going to be 1 square second, okay? And those square seconds are going to cancel out with the square seconds here. And we just get 10 times 1, which is 10. And 10 times 1 half is 5. So in this time interval, it's fallen 5 meters, okay? In this time interval, it's fallen 5 meters, which is four times as many as it fell in the first half second, right? So in the first half second, it fell... In the first half second, it fell 1.25. And then in the next... In the full second, the full distance it fell would have been 5 meters. So the next half second... Okay, it would have fallen 3.75 meters, right? So from time one half second to a time of full second, right, it would have fallen 3.75 meters for a total distance of 5 meters that it fell from the start point, okay? So we'll just do a couple more of these. And let's see what happens after 2 seconds. Um... So let's say at time equals 2 seconds, where is the velocity and what is the distance, right? So, again, all we need to do is the same procedure. So the velocity is going to be equal to AT, which is going to be 10 meters per second squared times 2 seconds. And 10 times 2 is... 20 meters per second and the distance is going to be one half a t squared which is going to be one half 10 <clears throat> meters per second times two seconds squared and now two square seconds is going to be four well, two seconds quantity squared is going to be four square seconds. Four times ten is forty. Forty cut in half is twenty. So we fall on a distance of twenty meters. Okay. Now, here's one question that I'd like to ask. All right. If the distance. from the window to the ground is 25 meters how long until it hits the ground right if the distance from the window to the ground is 25 meters, how long until the ball hits the ground? Well, the reason I'm asking this is, is, is look at this, okay? After one second, the ball has fallen 5 meters, but after two seconds, the ball has fallen 20 meters, okay? It only has 5 meters to go, so in the next second, it's going to fall well more than the, the distance it needs to cover, so it's going to hit the ground before 3 seconds, Right? But we want to know exactly how long it's going to take for it to hit the ground. Okay? So what we can do is, well, we know that the distance is 25 meters, and we know that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared, and we want to know the time. Okay? So what we can do is set up this equation, d equals 1 half at squared, and solve for t. So I need to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and that will give me a t squared equals 2d. And all I, I've just flipped the sides, uh, which side is which on the equal sign, but that's completely okay to do since they're equal. Uh, and then I can divide by a, and I'm going to get t squared is equal to 2d over a. And if I take the square root, I'm going to get t equals the square root of 2d over a. Whoops, 
two, not 2d over d, but 2d over a. All right. So if we plug our values in, this is going to be 2 times 25 meters divided by 10 meters per second squared. And 2 times 25 is 50. 50 divided by 10 is 5. So this is the square root of 5 square seconds. And this equals approximately 2.24 seconds. So then one last question I can ask is how fast is the object going when it hits the ground. Right? And so, what we want to do, because we know now how long it's going to take for it to hit the ground, what we can do is now say that the velocity equals a t, which will be 10 meters per second squared, times 2.24 seconds, so the object's final velocity is going to be 22.4 seconds, and that's the speed that it will hit the ground with. Okay? So I hope this video kind of gives you a sense of how to do some of the calculations if you're looking at just an object falling uh, without any initial velocity or uh, being thrown up in the air. The next video we will look at um, throwing an object up into the air. All right? See you next time.